specify uh, the three parts being uh, current status and the impact which we all know uh, but just to touch highlight some of the more salient points uh, what uh, overview of the past I, I believe it's important that we touch a little bit of the past as well because uh, there is uh, I, I can feel it you know being still very much in touch with the industry I feel there's a lot of frustration particularly with the juniors who are involved in the business and they all thought this was a very nice fast forward easy going happy go lucky uh, industry it is but at the moment it is not so uh, so that I, I need to give you the reassurance that uh, this storm is not going to last forever that there is a brighter side to it so that is why it's important that we reflect a little bit on the past and some key insights on how we can move forward and a few suggestions which I believe most of you are doing it but again uh, some might be related to my personal experiences in the tourism industry as well so firstly on uh, the current status I mean it's not only tourism but this whole world has turned upside down with Covid something that we never bargained, never anticipated, never expected and uh, there are certain industries and businesses which are in fact bigger and has a bigger impact than tourism. If you take tourism per se, I can tell you that the hotel industry has a significantly higher impact than the DMC business. Purely for the simple reason that uh, the DMC business has a much lower, lesser capital investment vis-a-vis -vis, uh, how much you will spend on, on, a, on a hotel business with regular refurbishing and all that which is exorbitant. So if you don't have an upline, you're dead, right? So so that that's where we stand. Briefly to touch on the figures, if you take the last six months of 2019, we barely crossed the million passengers. That's a drop from 2018, uh, which was the best year for tourism hitherto so far with 2.3 million arrivals. Last year, with the first six months achieving a, a million, we ended up with 1.9. Now, this six months, 2020 till end June, we are at half a million, 50% of last year and half a million. And let's be brutally honest about it. We will have zero in July, zero in August, right? Beyond that, anybody's guess, I believe September will also be uh, tough, right? Uh, but I can't see realistically us as a country doing more than 800,000 tourist arrivals for this year. Uh, then out of the 800,000 you need to see how much of this is really genuine leisure where all of you here are involved. Meaning uh, how much would a DMC handle? It will filter through a DMC vis-a-vis -vis the informal sector and the online and whatnot. Uh, which is anyway argument wise it's all to arrest arrivals to the country but that's a different topic altogether so the impact is severe how uh, how have we gone through this in the past and what are some of the things that we have done to come out of it uh, past I, I hate to deal with the past but i think there are some salient good things that uh, there are learning experience from the past past which you can probably replicate and copy for the future as well you know now what i'm going to just touch on are all things that i have personally experienced uh, myself gone through it you know it, it started from i've been involved in this business from the late 70s and the first blip serious blip in tourism came in 1983 that's when we had the communal riots in Sri Lanka a flourishing industry an industry where we were comfortably making 25% margins, believe it or not, right? Eyes closed, you put your margin and that's it. So those days were okay till early 83 and we had the communal riots in July and that really dampened the process. Then we had a situation in 86, 87 with the Indo-Sing uh, Sri Lanka uh, agreement uh, where there was commotion, uh, you know, followed by the southern insurrection which led to a situation where uh, in fact, uh, the, the tourism authorities at that point of time, in 1989, Sri Lanka was in a situation, a dilemma where we had the northern insurrection with uh, the Tamil situation and we had the southern insurrection. 
and it it came to a situation where tourism business was not sustainable, and they had to take a very hard, brutal decision that they should be they meaning the the authorities should be asking the tourists to evacuate the country, and that happened in 1989. So they were very politely they telling everybody, look, please leave. Right? Uh, 90s was more. Uh, 1990s was. Life with surviving the war, right? We had uh, numerous bomb explosions all over the country in Colombo as well, the 96 uh, Central Bank bomb attack, etc. Uh, so that that was again a period of turmoil. Then we had a double by me in 2001. I was the president of Sri at that time. I remember it was uh, tough times. We had we had uh, the airport attack in July, six Sri Lankan aircraft. Uh, Unprecedented. These things were not happening in this day and age, but that happened in July. Same year, we had 9/11 uh, in New York. So we had a global situation and a local situation, and that brought tourism to a standstill. Right? Uh, then, uh, then meanwhile, in the globe, we had the SARS epidemic in 2003. Ebola was there in Africa. Fortunately, these two. Uh, were blips. It did not uh, capture the whole world as it is now. It only caught the attention of certain regions and they were managed uh, properly and on time. Uh, after that, we had the peace talks in this country and tourism was again on the move. I mean, I would consider 2002, 2003, uh, 2004 as, as very, very strong years for tourism. We had the charters back, we had everybody wanting to travel to the destination. We didn't have to do that much of marketing because the destination was known. And fortunately, there was peace in the country because of the peace talks. This again, sadly, did not last for long because we had the tsunami. In 2004, December 26, we had the tsunami. And tsunami was something Sri Lanka took again, a uh, brutal impact of that, and tourism uh, was impacted. Naturally, and we we, in, we unfortunately did not recover from it uh, to the extent that we should have. Then 2007 and 8 was uh, the situation with uh, the recession in uh, Europe. Uh, that again uh, had a had uh, we had most of our European business impacted. But all these also had silver linings. So you know, in 7 and 8, when we had an impact with the European markets. We managed to create complete new markets, and these markets came, uh, say for example, Eastern Europe, Russia and Ukraine were born after the, uh, the economic uh, crisis in Europe, and we, where we migrated to newer areas, uh, uh, that's the Eastern European markets. Then India is another move. The start of India was in 2001, where we had this July attack as well as the 9-11. And um, at that time, uh, you know, all of us in the industry, it was a hopeless situation. Nobody was coming. Uh, and, and to compound all that, we had a situation where uh, the insurance premiums to Sri Lanka was massive. Whether it was by way of shipping or whether it was aviation, the insurance premiums were exorbitant to the extent that it was not viable for anybody to come. So shipping was impacted, flights were impacted. Most international flights did come. Our own charter flights uh, didn't want to operate. And uh, so one of the strategies was to pay the charters, uh, give them a fee uh, to subsidize some of their operating costs for them to come. So that, in fact, uh, at that time, those hard calls were taken. Right? The next, of course, landing fees and all the ground handling was subsidized as well. And, uh, then there was this uh, thought that we should tap the Indian market. India was a booming market and everybody thought India was an opportunity, let's go for India. And the uh, chairman at that time uh, in the industry with Sri Lankan Airlines came to India, let's do a buy one, get one free offer. And that to me was the catalyst, was the opening of the Indian market. Right? It worked. It worked because there was inventory available, there were seats available. Uh, there were beds available and the tourism industry was hungry for new business. And, and that momentum, you know, everybody had a fairly big slice of that market and that momentum has continued uh, since then. We had the end of the war, 
you know, everything was fine from 2009 and we, then we you know moved on very, very well uh, till we had this issue. So, so that's roughly part of uh, the past experiences. But I must tell you that from 2009, uh, we have had a very steady uh, growth over the years. There wasn't a blip in any of the ensuing years. Uh, up to 2018, we had a very positive tourist arrivals. Uh, then, of course, the other two situations that we had experienced. So, this also uh, brought a complete new dimension to the travel industry. Dimension by way of inventory, right? Inventory meaning, you know, people, everybody who had accommodation in the past thought, look, this is the time for us to uh, monopolize on the situation. Yes, most of them did, who were smart, who reinvested and put money back into the business. But there were lots of new entrants, entrants into the business, whether it was in the accommodation uh, space or uh, particularly in the, in the inbound travel business. I mean, we, we saw the whole thing getting fragmented, and fragmentation, as long as there isn't enough uh, demand, uh, then could lead to pricing situations. And we also had certain times during certain windows, uh, we've experienced unnecessary pricing issues because uh, the industry was expanding. They all wanted a piece of it, and the demand was not as good as they hoped. But that's healthy. I mean, competition is healthy. And uh, so that, that, that uh, it, it was going on very well with uh, 2018 tourism receipts, I believe, touched in here 4 billion US dollars. So there, those were really good times. But uh, where, from where we are, what do we do now? What is it that we have to do? I mean, lots of people have spoken about it, but I'm going to also touch on this not rocket science, but uh, I think it is very, very important the first and the most fundamental thing is for us to manage our costs. Right? When you, it is obvious. If you even as far as your, you know, take for example your home finance. You have an X income and you have a Y expenditure. Right? Your income, X income, is slash by 50 percent or even lower. And what do you do with your expenditure? So you, you have to see how you can balance it. And in in inbound tourism business, from again my experience. Uh, the two main key elements are admin, your administrative costs, and your selling and distribution costs, that is your marketing expenses. This will collect it, it will be as, would be as much as 50% of your total cost. Uh, these two will take roughly 70 to 80% of your total overhead. Right? So that is where you have to attack. You have to attack this admin and your marketing. Cost as you, of course, in this present environment, there won't be that much marketing, but you have to see how you can uh, keep uh, reducing it. And one way of doing it, and I know lots of companies who are doing it, is what do we, uh, is to bring technology into the picture. You have to live with technology. There is no way technology is improving daily. Uh, it has also done the tourism business upside down. You all know the threat of online online uh, booking engines and you know the various other business channels uh, they don't need the services of any one of us right so what do we do to be smarter in the way we do business to reduce our operating costs right i know companies which have in fact during the absolute lockdown period who finish uh, finish their accounts uh, during the year end of 31st march within a week doing everything online everything online including the settlement of the guide expenses and all that was of course it didn't happen within a month or so if there's a process involved but all what I'm saying is the technology in this day and age allows it and we must embrace it because that is going to uh, reduce uh, give you a massive reduction on this then uh, another key element is to again as I said you know we have a lot of new stuff new uh, entrants in this business. How do we keep them morale up? How we, do we keep them motivated? Uh, unfortunately or fortunately, they don't have the options. They had in the past of jumping from one business to the other or from one job to the other because the jobs are sacred. You don't get those jobs anymore because of the, again, because of the current situation. But it's important that we, 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 uh, we 
retain them and we give them moral up. And to keep them moral up is to let them have faith in this business. You know, tourism is not going to die. I can tell you that it is too big a business for the entire world globally for it to uh, be, be squashed by a COVID. COVID is going to impact us, but it's not going to impact us forever. It has impacted us, will impact us, us, but it's not going to impact us forever. And, and that message is, is powerful. That has to be told. And by the end of this year, hopefully, uh, there are 200 odd companies fighting for a vaccine. The best of technology is being put in. Well, there will be a breakthrough. There's about 10 to 15 human testing done by them. So the moment you find a vaccine, that's the ultimate solution, right, a vaccine. But we can't wait for a vaccine. The life must go on. Good example is some of the countries which have opened. You know, UK, for example, is they just concluded a test match in South Africa, you know, and, and it was a fantastic ending, uh, you know, very, very absorbing test match within guidelines. So respect those guidelines. As long as you can play within those guidelines, we can. But it's also an evolving story, you know, the, the situation changes for, uh, by the hour, by the minute. One week ago we were in a different situation altogether. Now it's, it's something looks a little, little more serious. I mean, India at the moment is talking about 20,000 plus cases every day, new cases. Yesterday, Contas came and said they are banning all international flights till 31st March 2021, right? Contas is the flag carrier in Australia, except the window to New Zealand. So, you know, the job losses in Emirates, 9,000 staff, who, who, who would have ever thought that Emirates is going to be in that situation? So, they, there will be the ups and downs, right? Uh, but we we have, uh, as Amit was saying, you know, this is a very, very resilient industry. At every given time, when we were hammered, we have raised our head, right? We have. I, I may have been thought of leaving this business many times, so, but I never did. And, and I, you know, the head down and fought on. And I can see the positives as well. So, so that that's that's what I would like to convey. Right? Uh, this is not the end of the world. We have to survive this. We have to be strong. We have to be smart in everything that we do. We have to use this space for learning and development. That's another area. There's so much to do. And learning is not necessarily learning technology, uh, learning, but, but a lot of product learning. Right? Product learning, there's no no um, end to product learning. Sri Lanka is still not marketed properly. It is it keeps on marketing what the whole world know and what we know. There are lots of new spaces in different parts of the country which can be marketed. Simple things, simple attractions, but people love it. The experience aspect of it. All, all those, with their, their, so they, this is the time for, for that learning and development, right? Uh, product development is one, technology is one. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so these are some of the things that I, I wanted to share, but uh, I, I feel that, uh, you know, we, we also have a tendency in this industry to always ask for government handouts, you know. That's fine. I, I think as far as the government is concerned, they have done their best. Uh, they, they, they've been very helpful towards the tourism industry, particularly after Easter uh, and in, in this present situation as well. Uh, they, they, there's a lot that they are fighting as well from, from a national perspective because, again, this is not the only industry who is in this predicament. Right? So that, that's what I briefly wanted to touch on. Uh, the future of tourism is good. Uh, we will also, in my opinion, uh, this financial year is, is going to be a calamity. I spoke of figures that I thought, but even January, February, March, if you take the full financial year, you are going to struggle. We will probably have some numbers. It all depends on how the corridors open. If Sri Lanka, the key to this is the airport opening. Until the airport opens, nobody will allow. Uh, UK or EU will not give us the green light because if our own airport is closed, they will not allow Sri Lankans uh, free free access to those countries. So, so it's kind of reciprocal as, as well. 21-22 uh, is going to be hope with the vaccine and you 
know, hopefully we will have, I, I see, the way I see the future is 21, 22 winter, Sri Lanka will be back to normal. Uh, summer 21, July, August onwards, we will have traction. Uh, till then, we will have to see. We are, you know, whoever who is involved in finance, you know, even your own respective companies, you have to now start putting the figures and say, look, this is the cash that we have, cash is the king at the moment. This is how much we, funds we have. How do we stagger this, keep this for our survival, uh, for a, have a worst case scenario, right? And see from this worst case scenario, how do we manage, right? Uh, I mean, it was right in the hard decisions, brutal decisions, these have to come. Uh, but eventually, uh, the tough decisions will be minor compared to the big picture whether it's a company or the tourism industry per se. So these are some of the thoughts. Uh, we have a second round as well. Uh, I think there should be questions. I would like people to engage as much as possible in asking questions uh, because that is where we can chip in uh, properly and further. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ivanandan, for sharing your experience and that valuable advice. Um, just as Mr. Ivanandan said, uh, please do post your questions. Um, we will have the link up again, uh, so please do start posting your questions. Our final presentation this morning is an insight to the challenges faced by the hotel industry and the way forward in the current context. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ruan Samar Singh, Managing Director, Technic Hotels. Over to you, sir. 